Russians strengthened air defense of Crimean Bridge, but this will not be able to stop Ukrainians. According to the Ukrainian Navy, active enemy actions are constantly taking place around the so-called Crimean Bridge illegally built by Russia. In particular, aircraft are constantly on duty hunting for Ukrainian drones. This was reported on air by the Ukrainian Navy representative Dmitry Petenchuk. In particular, he was asked what is currently happening around the so-called Crimean Bridge, how it is guarded, and so on. According to the speaker, there are continuous active actions of the enemy there. In particular, Russian aviation is operating, hunting for Ukrainian drones. Of course, the other components remain operational. This includes the air defense system and the Russian National Guard. In fact, crossing the bridge there now occurs in the mode of crossing the state border. At least that's what those who cross it complain about in local public groups. So yes, they are trying to keep security measures there at the highest possible level for obvious reasons, Pletenchuk said. Also during the broadcast, they talked about Bulgaria, Romania and Turkey conducting mine clearance in the Black Sea. Pletenchuk in particular noted that he could not comment on the actions of other countries, especially their results. At the same time, he said that the mine clearance work was caused by Russian aggression because of which our neighbors, partners, are facing the same problems as Ukraine, explosive objects in the water. Of course, in a similar volume, but mines periodically wash up on the shores of Romania, Bulgaria and the Turkish Republic. Therefore, they are forced to carry out corresponding operations because this is also our common problem, a common neighbor the Russian Federation, due to whose aggression? There are mines, the speaker said. A certain number of ships and vessels of the Russian Black Sea Fleet remain in the temporarily occupied Crimea. The Ukrainian Navy assumed that certain units were left in order to provoke the Ukrainian armed forces into spending expensive weapons. According to the representative of the Ukrainian Navy, Dmitry Pletenchuk, after the last patrol ship of the Russian Black Sea Fleet left Crimea, these are, in particular, support vessels that remain on the peninsula. In his opinion, most of them remain because the berthing front in Novorossiysk is ending. It was not designed for the number of ships that are currently there. Accordingly, there is nowhere to redeploy them. Also, perhaps, the enemy hopes that these units are not of interest to the Ukrainian armed forces as targets that need to be destroyed to waste valuable ammunition of the corresponding range on them. Or maybe this is what they are counting on. Russia's vast stocks of Soviet-era weapons are running out due to war in Ukraine. The Russian Federation might feel the scarcity of equipment it inherited from the USSR next year. That's according to The Economist, although the International Institute for Strategic Studies estimated that in February of this year, Russia may have had about 3,200 tanks in storage to draw on. Up to 70% of them have not moved an inch since the beginning of the war. A large proportion of the T-72s have been stored uncovered since the early 1990s and are probably in very poor condition, the article reads citing the IISS experts. They have reached a conclusion that Russian tank and infantry vehicle refurbishment from storage is expected to hit a critical point of exhaustion by the second half of 2025. Ironically, many Soviet weapons and components are in Ukraine and Kharkiv was the main producer of turrets for T-72 tanks. Additionally, it is suggested that Russia lacks workers who can maintain the necessary production. Most intelligence sources report that in the two years of war, Russia had lost about 3,000 tanks and 5,000 other armored vehicles. For example, Dutch Oryx has either photo or video evidence of 3,235 tanks destroyed, but adds that the actual number is likely significantly higher. Alexander Goltz, an analyst at the Stockholm Center for Eastern European Studies, says Vladimir Putin has the old Politburo to thank for the huge stockpiles of weapons built up during the Cold War. He says Soviet leaders knew that Western military kit was much more advanced than their own, so they opted for mass, churning out thousands of armored vehicles in peacetime in case of war. Before its demise, says Goltz, the Soviet Union had as many armored vehicles as the rest of the world put together. When the then Russian defense minister, Sergei Shoigu, boasted in December last year that 1,530 tanks had been delivered in the course of the year, he omitted to say that almost 85% of them, according to an assessment by the International Institute for Strategic Studies, a London think tank, 
were not new tanks, but old ones, mainly T-72s, old T-62s, and even some T-55s dating from just after the Second World War. That had been taken out of storage and given a wash and brush up. Since the invasion, about 175 reasonably modern T-90M tanks have been sent to the front line. Annual production this year could be approaching 90. 